I'm very excited to share that I just made a major upgrade on my net effective rent calculator, which is completely free to use. I'll put a link in the description below where you can download it for free. You don't need to sign up with an email. You can just click and download it and you can use it uh, as much or, uh, as you want. Again, completely free. The first version that I had, had on there was a very basic NER calculator. Didn't take into account discounting any of the future cash flows in the form of lease payments. It also didn't amortize any of the expenses such as tenant improvement allowance, leasing commissions, and it was also only available in complete year form. So you could only do it on a one to 10 year basis. The one that I just upgraded, and I'm going to do a full walkthrough in this video just to share some of the features that it has, takes all that into account. So you can do a 37-month lease analysis, you can do a 98-month lease analysis, and then it also allows you to amortize the expenses over the term of the lease, and it also discounts all the future cash flows back to zero. And interestingly, as I was going through the process of redesigning this, I just learned a lot about uh, net effective rent calculators in general. And there's some consensus on what should be included and what shouldn't be included, but it's not necessarily clear across the board. So as we go through this, you'll see that I developed this updated version of it uh, to allow for different scenarios as well. So you can still calculate a very simple NER where none of the cash flows are, amort are discounted, none of the expenses are amortized. You can still do that and it's very intuitive, but if you want the ability to incorporate a discount rate to have as an amortization as well as the discounting, it also has that functionality as well. And I also made it that it's just as user-friendly and dynamic as possible. So you'll see that there's a lot of the cells that can just be, uh, they'll automatically edit based on how long of a lease term you have on there and so forth. And then the other thing that I added is the ability to look at four different options at any given time. So maybe it's a tenant looking at four different buildings and they want to have a separate one but have a main page to compare it all. Uh, or maybe it's a landlord that's looking to see different scenarios and maybe they had a few different offers come in from different groups. They can use this to plug in to compare all of them on a net effective rate, either on the simple basis or on the, the more technically correct one where it's discounted and amortized. So we'll jump over to it and I'll show you some of these features in it right now. So if we come to the first one, we'll just enter in some information. The idea with this is that you only want to enter into the blue cells. Uh, I've actually locked uh, all the other cells for the sole reason that if one of those cells gets erased, it will destroy the entire workbook. So uh, you can really only enter in the blue cells anyways, but that's all you have to enter. There's formulas for everything else in here. And you'll see as we compare this, there's a lot of use in this. And if you want to play around with it, you can just come to this unlocked option tab down here. I've unhid all the columns, all the rows, all the uh, cells are unlocked and open. You could see all the different formulas uh, in here on, on everything that I did to, to create this. So if you want to play around with it, use that one as much as you want. Uh, the four options in the comparison tab, which I'll get to in a second, are all locked and you'll see why in a sec. So let's just say we're looking at a 25,000 square foot building. Uh, again, you can do this in, in any increment of months, uh, or you can just do a, like a five year lease if you want. Uh, as you enter that months, it will auto fill a lot of this information down here. So I designed it to be a very user friendly, dynamic workbook. And you can see if you come and put in 62 months, this will actually add, add the appropriate amount. And when we enter some more data here, all this will make uh, even more sense. Let's say operating costs are uh, estimated at $5 a square foot. And let's assume that there's going to be a 3% increase in that yearly. Uh, let's just put in an arbitrary 8% for discount rate. If you're not comfortable with using discount rates, uh, I've built this spreadsheet so that it'll calculate two numbers. One is with no discounting and one is with the discounting and the amortization of the expenses. I'll show you this, how this will look. And there's scenarios where I think you might only want to do a simplified version. I'll get into that in a second as well. Let's just put some numbers in here. Let's say $30,000 for tenant improvements. Let's say $30,000 for commissions and other expenses. You can see now that these blue cells are prompting us to put some data in here. So let's just put in $10 to start all in per square foot. And let's just assume it's a dollar a square foot in yearly escalations. You'll see that this automatically calculates your net rent. 
your operating costs are calculated. It will also calculate your gross rent. Now I also designed this that you can control any free rent and you can control whether it's net free rent or gross free rent and you can also uh, control when that occurs. So it's not always a given that it's just three months of free rent at the beginning of, of the term. It could be a month in year one and it can be three months in year three just using a hypothetical example. So you have full control over how you want to do this. In this first scenario, let's just assume that it's uh, one month of free net rent at the beginning and one month of free gross rent at the beginning. This will automatically calculate the free rent. Then it will take and amortize all the tenant improvements that we have up here, the $30,000 and the leasing commissions. It'll amortize that over the term of the lease. It'll tell us what the total net rent is, total gross rent, and then it'll also break it down into the net effective rent with no discounting or amortization, which I'm calling the simple model. And then also a true net effective rent by the technical term where this is including the discounting and the uh, amortization. Now, all of this data will also get pulled over to this comparison tab here. And you'll see that we've got the, a high level overview of it. So property, how long the lease term is, total NOI, some of the other important details, and then the net effective rent. So where this becomes handy is let's say in this option one, where we had 25,000 square feet at 60 months with these costs in there, what does that look like if we were to do or propose a longer term lease? So again, let's come in and let's put scenario two. Again, you can control, you can put whatever you want in here. But 25,000 square feet, what happens if we were to do that over 100 months, let's call it, and operating costs still at $5, 3% escalation, 8% discount rate, $30,000 in leasing commissions, $30,000 in, uh, in tenant improvement. And then again, let's say that uh, similar to scenario one, where we're getting a dollar escalation per year. Let's just assume that uh, we can get that same going all the way through. So it'd be getting to $18 by year nine. And the, the cool thing, which took a considerable amount of time to, to do on this and what was probably the most uh, excruciating part uh, that taxed my, my mental capacity when I was building this was having partial years in here. So 100 months would be uh, eight years and four months. So this accounts for those extra four months uh, as opposed to it just being a eight or a nine year lease. And again, let's come in and put the same one month free rent. So what this is essentially doing is this is amortizing those expenses over a larger period. And because we're presumably increasing the rent at a dollar a square foot in every year, the number is going to be that much better. So now if we take all this data and come over to the comparison tab, you'll see a side by side comparison of how these two different scenarios look. So in this case, by increasing the lease term and getting some escalations at, at the latter part of those years and spreading it over a longer period of time, you can move the net effective rent on the simple model from 11 and, and change to 13 and change, or the net effective rent to 886 versus 859. So it's a, it's a useful tool where you can compare different scenarios as either the tenant or the property owner. One scenario where I think it might be handy to just use the, the, uh, the simple model is if you have limited uh, uh, tenant improvements or leasing commissions. So let's just uh, say scenario three, and let's just say it's 25,000 square feet. Let's say we're doing a uh, 84 month lease. Uh, let's say again, $5 a square foot, 3% uh, escalation, 8% discount rate. And now let's just assume that we don't have any tenant improvements, no leasing commissions, and no free rent. Because this model is taking all the future values of the cash flows and discounting it to a present value, it will actually make this number look less than appealing. And I'll show you. Let's just take $10 a square foot over the term of the lease. So assuming no yearly escalations, just a $10 a square foot net rate. If we come down uh, to the bottom here, you'll see that the simple model 
the net effect of rent is $10 a square foot, which is what we would expect. But because we're discounting all those future cash flows, even though it's at $10 a square foot, we're discounting those at this discount rate, in this case, 8%. And again, that number can be whatever you uh, decide it should be. But because we're discounting those future cash flows by 8% to a present value, it's going to show a net effect of rent of 744. And what's interesting is that I think this is where a lot of the debate comes from, is if you're a tenant or if you're a property owner, depending on what side of the equation you're on, what are you actually trying to extract from a net effective rent model? I know some very sophisticated property owners that don't even put much weight onto a net effective rent calculation, but instead they're much more drawn to the NOI that the property brings in. So you have to really decide what you're hoping to accomplish with this spreadsheet. What I would, would encourage you to do is if you are just trying to show the effect of what happens if you spread amortize or amortize uh, an expense over a long period of time and you're just trying to show what happens if you spread it from five years to ten years how that affects the rent then I think that this can be a very useful tool if you're just trying to decide what the, what impact this has or what the true net effect of rent is and you're discounting all future cash flows which is is surely going to be uh, at a number uh, presumably around that eight percent or plus or minus uh, that number the net effect of rent that you're going to show isn't going to actually look anywhere near what a ten dollar square foot a a number is every single year for for the term of the lease so i would just i'd recommend that you really understand what you're hoping to ac uh, accomplish with a, uh, with a net effective rent calculator and get a better sense of, of what the number is going to show you. And, and just have a conversation with whoever you're working with, whether it's you're doing it for a property that you own or whether you're doing it on behalf of a client, really just emphasize what a net effective rent is trying to do and whether you are discounting and amortizing those expenses or whether you're just trying to show a very simple model on how this works. But I really hope that this tool is helpful. I'd welcome your feedback. I'm open to uh, modifying or changing changing this. Uh, I think that it's reasonable to say that we could have another column in, or another row in there for other income, uh, if it's parking or whatever, whatever it is, uh, we could look to revisit that. But I also don't want this to be an overwhelming spreadsheet where people are, are uh, feel overwhelmed by it. So I want to just have this very simple. As you can see, as we're going through this, you don't have to enter a whole lot of information. Everything is already calculated in there. And, and for myself, I think that this is one of the most useful things that, that I could use when calculating an NER uh, calculation. But again, just understand what the limitations are, understand why you're using it in the first place. And uh, again, if you get any value from this, I'm providing this completely for free. I'm not asking for anything in exchange other than I just want to provide to, to the community here, whether you're in industrial real estate or any other asset class, I just want to provide something that I think would be helpful. So if you get any value from it, if you wouldn't mind uh, just liking this video, uh, that, that's uh, really all that I'd be asking for. Uh, and any feedback, again, shoot me a note. Uh, I'll put my email uh, below if you want to reach out to me. And I thank you for watching this video. Catch you next time.